Hello ladies and gentlemen, Willie here. I wasn't going to do this video initially because I know it's something that Blizzard have shown time and again they just aren't really willing to commit resources to stopping this kind of thing happening but the amount of damage caused to the game by the level 58 boost and especially the new wave of bots which are taking advantage of this in TBC Classic is much worse than I ever expected it to be. Most of the footage here from the open world was done within the space of one hour on a Thursday morning. I just want to say that to give you an idea of how very, very easy it is to find bots doing this. Literally every single bot without fail was a level 58 boosted character. The limitation of one per account for bots is completely irrelevant. As expected for them, it's just a huge time save from actually having to level. The restriction of no drain or blood elf equally doesn't matter whatsoever. It's an extra $40 or whatever it is they pay for this service on top of the sub fee. This is so, so much extra money for Blizzard. Even if these characters are being banned within the space of a month, the time it takes them to break even is next to nothing. Also, the boost has done so much harm to the old world. It just feels dead. People aren't out there leveling and questing anymore as they used to be. Whenever people say how much Cataclysm ruined the game because it changed the open world, just seems more and more BS the more I hear it. In Classic, so many people chose to boost past all the content, and now in TBC, you can do the same by giving instead of money in game to a mage, real money to Blizzard. You know what else? Do you have a T-Boo's Blazing Longsword or you bought one in Classic? That incredibly special and unique item. It's on the box of the original game. It's always been heralded for its mystical rareness and to this day is worth an absolute fortune on retail. Yeah, it's kind of worthless on Classic now and it's getting cheaper by the day. You know the bots inside Blackrock Depths, the rogues, the ones that have plagued the instance with pickpocketing for well over a year now? Well, don't you worry, they're still going good and strong. In fact, they even got a raise in TBC because Tibu's Blazing Longsword, yep, the epic fiery sword, drops from the heavy junk boxes that they pickpocket all day long in the TBC patch that we're playing on. So if you ever got hold of one of these as a trophy in Classic, intending to just hold on to it for the sake of it because you could never get one on retail, or to try and sell it at a later date, then that's one very expensive paperweight, I'm afraid. Well, at least you don't lose money until you sell it. Right? Right? Anyway, let's take a fly around the good old continent of Outland and see if we can find ourselves any average farming enjoyers. By the way, I reckon there are a good few gold farmers in here as well. It's just that with some of them, they either look like stolen or sold characters because my God, we're going to be seeing some interesting item and talent choices that I quite literally refuse to believe somebody could have played the game as much as these people are geared and actively have made that choice unless they are huffing industrial quality paint thinner prior to logging in. So starting outside Shatra, Silmia Lake, or as I like to call it, the Druid Nature Reserve, which is home to usually about half a dozen or so of our fairy friends, happily farming away after those moats of water. We usually have some warlocks here too, and the occasional rogue. I found all three. Druids are good, especially feral due to leader of the pack healing, and aquatic form for, well, breathing underwater. Locks are good too because they can just cast that spell. And mobs here also respawn insanely quickly. This place was very busy for a Thursday morning, I must say. After this, I decided to head up north to the Dead Mire, another great farming spot. The giants here can be heard upon death for a range of different items, including terracone, which I don't know about your server, but for me, they're over six gold each. That's a lot. This is a good spot for farming primal life as well, and also has a bunch of mining and various herb nodes here as well. If you've leveled here in, well, the past month or so, probably longer than that at this point, then you've probably seen people running eagerly to try and herb anything that you've killed as soon as you do. But there was only about four or five people here at the time, including some regular players, I thought at least, so that's not really a problem, is it? Next, we're going to head over to Void Ridge. I think you're going to like this. Came across another druid who was about as human as the T-1000. And I was going to report him anyway, and then I saw this talent choice in particular, and even if he wasn't a bot, I still would have been tempted to report him just for this alone. Regardless, we went over a bit more east, and you'll be glad to know that I'm kidding. Oh my god, there's so many bots around this one spot. This was unreal. They're all farming moats of shadow here. I remember doing weapon skill on my paladin not so long ago, and I thought this place was just really busy because of, you know, popular farm spot. But as per usual, and as we've seen so far, everyone... Everyone was a boosty here, loaded up on BOE gear, and most of them were even level 70s, your druids, warlocks, and a few rogues in the mix as well. 
I decided to pop on click to move as is tradition here it appears and join in on the fun a bit. I even got an applause from one of them so well that was nice wasn't it? And all the void walkers that spawn here are on hyper spawn just like the eels in Silmia Lake that we saw a little bit ago. And this is all in the open world imagine. In classic at least the majority was inside instance. This is just from me flying from one spot to another which I know are pretty heavily botted in the morning in one go. This would be so easy to get rid of if actual human game masters were employed to log into the game and look directly, not to rely upon automation or player reports to sort this out. Why do they have to rely on player reports when we're already paying them? What exactly are we paying for here? You want one big reason why Classic Fresh is gonna flop? Go and rewind the last few minutes of this video and imagine how a player feels when they want to try and farm some gold for raid consumables or to level a professional to buy a BOE and they're met with this. Expect this with fresh classic by the way when it happens. Expect a billion dollar company to value people shitting on the economy for their extra dollars as much as you the loyal player. Because we had 18 months of classic. Modders have their plans perfected. They have all their testing done. The gold farms programmed and ready to fire up. They know what triggers bans and they're gonna totally infest the game once again while well, not enough is ever done about it. Let's round this out with some dungeons shall we? They're always popular. Of course BRD is as popular as ever even with rogues being able to get T-boos now. Obviously they never have to leave the instance so you can't actually report them unless you whisper them something and then right click and report off that. Yes there's even places to sell inside the dungeon so it's a bit inconvenient isn't it? Would be good if somebody could, um, you know, teleport to them or maybe even teleport them out of the dungeon to some remote location and see how they react. But when they're all level 58, coincidentally. I hopped over to the slow pens where we came across another character, shall we say. Bellstrike Hood, Girdle of Ruination, Will of Edward the Odd, even Enchanted. Oh, sorry about the interruption of looking at the gear here. We've just got this constant stream of rogues coming out the instance. Imagine all those really good epics. He must have some good trinkets too, like uh, Lifestone and there's no way. You could, this has to be a wind up. You can't actually be serious. Blime Age? I know the item's purple, but you probably want something with something known as stats on them. They're quite good. In fact, where's your boosted trinket? That would be better than this by a long way. Anyways, I hung outside the pens for a bit and we had a steady stream of rogues and mages. Every single one of them being a boost, popping in and out. There's probably some legitimate players in there as well. People actually boost slow pens in TBC for gold. In terms of what they're farming for level 60s, you can see talents on some rogues here that max out movement speed and their ability to reset vanish or just threat in general. I imagine they're just mining and herbing, your usual stuff. As for mages, I guess the gold farms in here are doable at level 60. I've seen clips in the past of mages which are pure bots farming through Maradon, so I wouldn't put it past them at this point. Finally, we headed over to the Mana Tombs, which had a similarly insane number of rogues on the slash who, when the damn thing decides to work, that is. This place is known for chest and mining roots. And this is it. This is the impact of the boost and how many bots there are three months in. Now, I know regardless of a boost existing, Blizzard should be doing better nevertheless, but... This is one of the reasons why a lot of people did not want it in the first place because it was always going to be an issue. I don't know how I'd play as a more casual person who has had less time so far to farm up or to get crafted gear or epic flying. Farming out in the open world just seems so impossible to compete. Even status items like T-Boos are getting worthless due to this. Try any of these spots I've been to on your server or doing a slash shoe on your server, provided you have some kind of population there of course. I'm sure you will see something similar, especially the lake outside chat. You could probably get to that one really fast and I swear it's like this all day, every day at the moment. But don't you worry, I'm sure the sixth monthly ban wave will hit in about uh, ooh, three months or so and then we'll be fine again, right? Yeah, that's it. That's the video. This is Blizzard and this is your TBC. I'd like to talk about the possibility of the fresh classic soon. If you didn't know, it was put on the PTR again recently. And I find the idea that it could be soon crazy and given that's why things are usually put on the PTR, maybe there's something to talk about there. But I don't think it's going to really kick off whatsoever, even if Blizzard add in lots of changes, including the ones they put on the survey. But we can talk about that soon. Sorry about the delays on the new stuff. As promised, it's mainly a bottleneck on my end of wanting to get the new PC sorted. And I want to make sure I can get everything looking as good as it can be. That's it, guys. Let me know your thoughts. If anything about all of this, thank you as always so much for watching. And I will see you all in the next one very soon.